Okay. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us. If you will uh, join us for the Pledge of Allegiance, we can start the meeting. The Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Cell phones are silenced. Microphones are on. We're cooking. Okay. Roll call, please. Okay. Trustee Trescott. Here. Trustee Pompo. Here. Trustee LaRue. Yeah, here. Trustee Marks. Present. Treasurer Johnson. Here. Clerk retires here. And Supervisor Durant. Here. Um, staff present is Manager Gerard and Roger Zappo from the Township Attorney. Committee members present are Dave Wiegand from Planning, Recreation, and Roads, Mike Springer from Recreation and Roads, and Mary Davis is here from the Library uh, Township Advisory Committee. And uh, that's it. Okay. This is the regularly scheduled Marquette Township Board meeting, Tuesday, June 7th, 2016. It's a little after 7, five minutes after. So I will need a motion to approve the consent agenda, which typically consists of the approval of prior meeting minutes of May 17th, received committee and other reports, including the planning com committee agenda for June 8th and draft minutes of May 11th, the road committee draft minutes of May 4th, Marquette County Solid Waste Management Authority draft minutes of May 18th, Fire Department business meeting draft minutes of May 9th, as well as the officers meeting of the same night. Peter White Public Library Township Advisory Council minutes of March 2nd. And correspondence not requiring board action, which includes um, a letter from Michigan Township Association and our quarterly franchise fee payment from Charter Communications. Also bills payable in the amount of $133,398.65 and the financial statements for April, the financial and the treasurer's report. So moved. Support. Yes, Clerk Retard. Only, only comment I'm going to say is I'm just going to insert into the prior meeting minutes, I'm just going to include the closed session minutes also. Okay. From the same night, right? Correct, yeah. So I'll move with a correction. Motion and support, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Then we need a motion for the approval of the remainder of the agenda, unless somebody has something to add or change. So okay. moved. Motion and support, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Then we have public comment up next. If anybody would like to address the board, name and address. Mike Springer, um, Eagles Nest Road. Uh, two things I want to report on. One of them is uh, the May 21st uh, cleanup of our parks, and the other one is uh, National Trails Day, which occurred uh, just this past weekend. Um, and Randy is just ready to go. Um, this was May 21st, uh, cleanup at both of our parks. Um, uh, Todd Carruth brought his uh, fellowship from the later uh, Church of the Later Day Saints out there. Uh, we had probably 40 to 50 people from his church along with other township members that helped uh, clean up. Um, these are a lot of people that were out there helping us out that day. Uh, we want to recognize uh, some of our sponsors as well. Uh, Walmart provided over uh, $200 uh, in food and uh, equipment to clean up. We also had uh, donations from Mark Curran for coffee and also a Kevin Kakala. Cook. Did I say that right, Pete? Kukula. Kukula, okay. <laughs> From uh, Sarah Lee Bakery that provided all the bonds. So um, those donations were, uh, were 
were real nice and it uh, fed fed everybody and they're talking about coming back next year so um we uh we had rec committee members out there we can almost count on pete larue being there um and then uh, there's todd caruth um there's some guy with uh, wiegand's uh, leaf blower that's michael and there's uh two favorite ladies of uh, Jason McCarthy and myself that were out there helping. And then of course, uh, wherever Pete goes, he brings his assistant, uh, Marilyn LaRue, with him. <laughs> so, but we just, it was a great day. We had uh, good weather and uh, we cleaned up everything plus uh, blowing out the, the rink that was going on. We hope to do this next year. Also want to recognize uh, Cedar Motor in for a $50 contribution as well as uh, $50 from uh, Lynn and Reggie Durant. That $100 is uh, in the rec committee fund and we use that for seed money next year. One of the things we do need is another shade, uh, shade 10. But. So that's what happened on May 21st and uh, it was great. The biggest turnout we've ever had. We hope to continue that next year. Uh, one other thing, uh, this past weekend, uh, we always celebrated National Trails Day at Schwemwood. Um, we used the Iron Range role, we uh, assist them, which is a fundraiser for a youth mentoring program called Reach and Rise at the YMCA. This year, uh, we had more participants than we have in the last, have had in the last two years. In its third year, it was very successful, despite the, the rain we had. Um, I had the opportunity to um, sweep the bicyclists. In other words, I was the last guy in on a bicycle. And one of the things that I noted that here in our township, we had our roads very well covered. Thanks to our fire department, to Rhonda Mars and all the men in the fire department that were out there uh, on that day, we had the best, we had the most people providing safe crossings of our roads in the township. So. Thanks to all those people who volunteered, and um, thanks to the township. Thanks, Mike. Oh, good evening, Mary Davis, 3 Northwoods Lane. I'm happy to follow Mike because I want to share some exciting news about events at Peter White Library. Our new director, Andrea Ingmeyer, has arrived and began her position yesterday. And on June 17th, there will be a Meet the Director opportunity for all the members of our community. It will be at 2 o'clock um, until 4 o'clock at the library and the Huron Mountain Club Gallery. So I think that will be a great opportunity to meet her and see what the directions of Peter White's future will look like. In addition, I wanted to highlight the summer reading kickoff program at the library. I heard today that over 500 people had gathered for this summer reading, and that is a program that continues all throughout the summer um, for, for children. Uh, special events in June, uh, um, the On Your Market Set and Read Party kickoff already occurred. Uh, future things in include On Your Market Set and Garden, um, On Your Market Set and Fish, with people coming from the South Shore Fishing Association and the Fish and Wildlife Service and Michigan's DNR. Also in June, the Braganzi String Quartet will be per performing a children's concert in the community room. It continues into July with world games, um, games from all over um, our world, different countries. Science Palooza with the Michigan Science Center and even a bicycle repair workshop with the Revolution's bike shop. In August, there will be a concert from Papa Crow, and uh, the Lego Mania continues, and Star Lab, um, they'll be working with an inflatable planetarium. So lots of wonderful things for, for our children. Uh, the Peter White Library is now going to have a permanent um, used bookstore located on the second floor. And of course, that will be something that they can use for a fundraiser. Uh, the Marquette Community Foundation donated $1,400 to Peter White Library 
for the STEM program. That's science, technology, engineering, and math. And it's um, directed for children grades K through eight. We also have um, participated in the NMU Marquette County One Book, One Community Committee, and the book selection for this year is The Roundhouse by Louise Erdrich. And a very special uh, fun event, Under the Radar Michigan is coming to Marquette. And I don't know if anyone's seen that program on PBS, but they will be here on Wednesday, June 29th to do a program talking about the stories uh, from their travels around Marquette. In addition, there will be um, a weeknight concert from Dave Bett in June. And this is in addition to all the other um, regular occurring events, um, speakers, programs, um, things that we have gotten used to. So our library really does have a lot to offer, and I'm happy to share with you some of these events. If you are a member, you probably received this brochure in the mail. If you're not, you can check their website, and I believe they have copies available um, on the first floor in the library. So. Um, Thank you for allowing me to share this, and I hope that this will, this outreach will continue and the children of our township and our community can all benefit from what Peter White has to offer. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Good update. Good evening. I'm Lowell Larson. I live at 14 River Run Road in Nagani Township, and I'm running for sheriff. There is an, this is an important year for us because Sheriff Lovelace is retiring after 20 years as sheriff. And there's three candidates this year and all three of us are Democrats. So <coughs> your next sheriff will be elected in the primary August 2nd. A Little bit about myself, I'm born and raised in the city of Marquette to Lowell and Pearl Larson. Lowell was a school teacher at Marquette for about 35 years, taught industrial arts. My mother Pearl owned and operated Marquette Embroidery and currently my wife and I have purchased Marquette Brewery for the past uh, and owned and operated that for the last five years. And we live in Nagani Township with our three sons. Um, I've at the, worked at the Sheriff's Office for 17 years and I've been a former supervisor in the jail. I'm currently a supervisor on the road. I did search and rescue for almost 10 years. I'm currently on the dive team. I'm a union president. I'm the firearms instructor. I'm the forensic interviewer, I'm an evidence tech, and the list goes on and on. So I know that department like the back of my hand and I wear probably the most hats out of anyone at that department. What's gonna make a difference in this election is that I'm the only internal candidate that knows the sheriff's office from the ground level up. Two thirds of our operation is the jail alone. And I'm the only candidate that has that jail experience. I'm also the only candidate that's a Market County native. My three sons are fifth generations of Larsons that have lived in Marquette County. And also, I'm very active in the union. I'm the only one that's been a negotiator and currently I sit as a union president. Some of the things that I would like to do as your next sheriff is I want to improve our efficiency by embracing technology. We have all these different computer systems that don't talk to each other and we have to enter this information into all these different not just within the sheriff's office, but the entire criminal justice system. Our computers don't talk to the prosecutor, they don't talk to the jail, they don't talk to central dispatch, and so we need to bridge that gap. And I'm willing to step up to the plate to work at the local level, embracing our local businesses such as 906 Technology and the state, and try to work toward uh, something where we can make us more efficient with technology. I also want to put deputies back in the schools. I taught in the schools for about three and a half years and I saw the benefits of having a police officer in the schools, both as a relationship and a security presence. We pulled those officers out of the schools because of budgets. One way we can put officers back in the schools without spending any taxpayer money is create workspace. So instead of the deputies going back to their office and work on the reports, why not stop in at the school and work on the report? For instance, if we have an incident here in Marquette Township, we can stop in at uh, Polar uh, Middle School or North Star Academy and do the report there <coughs> compared to our office. That keeps our cars spread out. It allows the officer to be within the space of the school, interacting with the kids. When the bell rings, you can take a break from the report, go interact with the kids in the hallway, <laughs> and then you can go back to your report as they go. So I think it's a good creative way to put officers back in the schools at little no cost to taxpayers. 
I also want to provide take home cars to the deputies that will also help keep the cars spread out because if you think of the map of Marquette County all the cars start and end their shift in the, in the city of Marquette if we started and ended our shift at our houses the cars would be spread out throughout the county a lot wetter not only would it be make us more efficient for the on duty but it would also make us more efficient for the off duty call out for instance I'm on the dive team I get called out for that I, I'm an evidence tech I get called out for that I'm a medical examiner investigator and so I get called out instead of me driving back to the office loading up a vehicle with equipment then heading to the scene I could go right to the scene because I'd have my equipment and God forbid we ever have something like a school shooting um, we can get a lot of boots on the ground because we'll have emergency people right in their driveway and they can head right to the scene. I also want to improve addiction and mental health services for the inmates of the jail. If we could do away with addiction, I'd be out of a job. And I'd think that one AA or one NA meeting a week is not enough uh, to provide the inmates the tools that they need to uh, turn their lives around. So those are some of the things I'd like to do as your next sheriff. And I appreciate your support, August 2nd. Thanks, Lowell. Thanks for coming. Kathy Peters, Brickyard, 600 Brickyard Road. Um, it was interesting to open the paper tonight, and I think it's on page three where it talks about things that they're going to discuss tonight. And the first thing on the local briefing was there was a crash at the corner of Brickyard Road and US 41. Even though there is a light, there is a crash. Some guy didn't stop coming down the hill. And that's an intersection that I use to get out of my area. So that still concerns me. Um, but Brickyard Road, I have to tell you guys, they redid the road. The Payne and Dolan did a beautiful job. It's like driving down a you know, icy road. It isn't icy, but smooth. I'm, I spent so many years you know, avoiding the potholes and the crushes and the bad had pavement so they did a beautiful job they were a respectful crew they let the residents go back and forth they were making sure we were not trapped back in our houses and um, I, I really admire the way they handled that project and I'm very glad of it um, I'm here to, to oh, one other thing was uh, <laughs> we we're talking about the library I was at the library this afternoon because there was a program about Abby Beecher Robert Abby Beecher Abby Beecher Abby Beecher Longyear Roberts. Um, very interesting program, and the library is always full of people doing things. I, it's never a dull moment at that library. So I hope we can keep supporting them appropriately. Um, I, would, I, I was sort of alerted to this because there, this meeting tonight, because there's supposed to be a discussion about footnote E, and I don't know whether that, that's going to happen or not, but it talks about having a road going out on a, a commercial from a commercial establishment going out and using a rural residential road and that really does concern us living at the end of Brickyard Road or living on Brickyard Road so I hope you take that into consideration when you make some sort of a decision there thank you thanks Kathy Anybody else? Mark Davitola, UP Engineers and Architects. Here for the update item 9C and 10C and 10D. See, I told you you had a lot of the agenda. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. What, which ones? Thanks, Mark. 9C, 10C, and 10D. Uh, Dave Wigan here for the Road Committee. Uh, I'd also be available for questions on 9C, 10C, and I would like to comment on uh, 10D when it comes up. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Anybody else? Okay. Thanks for all of that. Board member comment. Who has something to share or ask or tell? Show and tell. Pete. I hope John can get a shot of this. Just wanna, this is the Exhibition Car Show and Cruise. Saturday, June 25th at the Westwood Mall. Excuse me. 
Yeah, I'm reading off of it. <laughs> <laughs> you just wanted your mic on. That's it. Yeah, this Saturday, the 25th of June. It's going to start at uh, registration is at 10 to 11. 11 to 2 is the car exhibits. Uh, 1.30 to 2 is a raffle with a, they have a Cadillac full of prizes. And at 2 to 3, they're going to have the, the cruise around the Presque Isle. So that's Saturday, June 25th at the Westwood Mall. You want one? I thought you were reading backwards. That's pretty good. Yeah. Is that it? That's Did it. Anything else? Okay. And for the record, no, we're not giving a Cadillac away. <laughs> <laughs> How about anybody else? Yes, Randy. Okay, as uh, Mr. Larson uh, attributed to, we are having an election coming up on August 2nd, which is the primary. So if you would like to vote in that, you've got to get in here before June 30th and register to vote. So you have 30 days in between. So. Anyone that would like to vote in that election, get in here that Friday. It's a holiday weekend, so get in here because that's be 4th of July will be that Monday. So get in here and register to vote. And last, no, two weeks ago, we had our planning commission meeting. It was a very interesting meeting because we actually kind of held it. Uh, it was a moving meeting. We had it on a bus. We conducted the meeting, started here. And uh, we had plenty of room for any people that wanted to tag along so it wasn't it wasn't limited it was an open meeting so but um, we took the Planning Commission and Supervisor Durant uh, tagged along with us and we did go around the township and saw a lot of the development that's going on and some property maintenance issues that need to be addressed and um, but I thought it was very good and I I think uh, the township board should probably go on one of those and, and probably either this fall or next spring because it's it's very good and uh, we we rented a, a bus from checker and it's probably like a 30 seat bus so there's plenty of room for everyone so and uh, it wasn't it was a interesting meeting moving along like that so but um, that's all I have die anything Ernie's got anything uh, one, uh, Market County Township Association meeting was on the uh, 25th, and I attended that. And two items of interest, the individual from the Market County Road Commission there talking about the Road Commission, what they're planning on doing this summer. Uh, the roads they were getting to was just primary roads, and I questioned, is there anything on secondary roads? And I didn't get any answer at that point in time. They're only interested in primary roads at this point, and that, uh, uh, and then I asked the question, but seeing that we as a township are redoing all our roads, where do we figure in that any of the savings? Are we going to see any of that on some of the other stuff? Uh, I have to say it got kind of quiet <laughs> real quick in that too. So uh, I didn't push the issue, but I think the word got there real quick in that. So, And then he talked about the equipment. They've got a lot of aging equipment that they're trying to replace and they're doing a purchasing used equipment that they've been able to... Uh, inspect in that they've been coming out very well on that that's big savings for them and it's being able to save money for for other projects in that uh, and then we had an individual from lake superior community partnership was there talking about what they've done and they talked about their annual meeting and that and uh, it was very interesting uh, but it was kind of a dog and pony show to my extent in that but uh, that was the two major things at this point in time and that uh, we don't have another meeting until september there I kind of encourage everyone to go. It's an open meeting. You get a lot of information there. You meet a lot of the different elected officials from the county uh, townships and that. So it, it becomes interesting at times to listen to what's going on throughout the, the county and that. So, so. Thanks. John, anything to share? Yeah. Okay. Dan, nothing? I just have a few things that I worked on the last few weeks. I was as a uh, Randy said I participated in the Planning Commission bus tour. We did that a few years ago, uh, the Planning Commission. We rented a bus. We spent about four hours, actually, being a little bit more, more involved and in checking all the different subdivisions and stuff. And we only had a couple hours or an hour and a half, I think it was, this time. But, yeah, the board, if nothing else, at least the new board needs to do that in the fall. 
it's a better time to be able to see through the woods. It works good. But we really needed to spend a little bit more time in the different subdivisions and um, go up to Eagle's Nest. We didn't. We kind of turned around and came back. But for a couple of the members, it was nice because they hadn't been around the township much. So that's the important thing is to kind of, you know, get out there and get kind of touchy-feely with what we've got. We don't even know the borders sometimes. So that was very good. Yeah, we'll definitely do that again. Also uh, was invited to the hospital groundbreaking downtown. That was down on Berga, the shovel thing that you saw in the paper. That was interesting. They're very, they're very encouraged. <laughs> I, can't, I can't see how it's going to work, but go for it. Um, the Schwemwood cleanup, I was going to just mention that. Thanks, Mike, for mentioning that, because we've got a lot of great volunteers that participated. And that's that's a worthwhile cause. We've got a couple of great parks that people worked very hard on to get them going, and, and we got to keep them up. That's important. We also met as a group last week, I believe it was, talked about the capital improvement plan, and the department heads are starting their, if they haven't already, their projections of what they expect our budget to look like. They're being pretty conservative because we still don't know a lot of the impacts of the uh, dark stores and where that's going to go but some of that has been turned around if you saw tonight's paper uh, the county chair Corkin did an excellent job I thought of recapping the whole tribunal issue and how important it is and the impact it's had but of course we've been harping about that for what four or five years now it hit our valley wig right away so hopefully that's turned around and we can just kind of get back to business and the Iron Range roll was a good uh, thing for the township. I had a couple people comment on, on how the trail was so great in the township, and they did mention the support. We had the state police out on M35 doing the crossing out there, and it was, it was good. People were filthy and wet, and it was cold, and it was great. They'd come in all, and I believe somebody did get hurt. There was a, a young person, I think, got, had a broken bone or something. I'm not sure what happened there, but as far as I know, everybody else had a good time. Um, and we did have our, our library committee met today because we knew that the library discussion would be on the agenda. So we do have a recommendation on the contract that we'll talk about shortly. And uh, well, we also had a DDA meeting this afternoon, which uh, Manager Gerard will fill everybody in on where that's going because that's part of the agenda too. So that's what we've been working on for the last couple weeks. So... After that, we can get into, we don't really have a forum discussion, unless there's something somebody wants to bring up, or it's, that's kind of a, um, what do you want to call it, like a freebie. If there's something that we need to, I'd like you guys to use that if you need to for a discussion item. You no, know, you can always let me know if there's information you need. We can have staff pull things, or if there's something you want to pursue. Let's just use that in the future. Otherwise, we will get into unfinished business. 9A is continued discussion of proposed trust acquisition for the KBIC Ojibwe Express tribal operations. They've asked to be put into trust, and which means the reservation would be part of the gas station. So I'm thinking, Randy, you want to give us an update on your letter? and. Sure. Uh, Members will recall we received a letter uh, from the uh, Department of uh, the Interior uh, Bureau of Indian Affairs uh, prior, just prior to your last meeting, uh, advising that the KBIC had in fact uh, initiated the trust process for the two parcels of property that they have, the one that currently contains the gas station convenience store and the vacant parcel that they also have attached to it. Uh, that uh, that notice uh, asked five specific questions basically that they were looking for information from the township on with regard to impacts that may uh, may impact or may uh, occur uh, were the BIA to grant uh, the the trust and that is a decision that BIA makes uh, it's not a decision the local government makes it's not a decision that anybody else makes that falls within their discretion uh, so we did respond to that. Uh, there was a response deadline of June 5th, which was uh, before this meeting. So the board had authorized staff to compile the data and to submit responses to the five questions uh, to the BIA, which we did. Uh, we submitted those on uh, May 31st. Uh, there was a, a, a combined effort from assessing planning zoning uh, in uh, general uh, operation of the township to answer the questions as well as fire department. Uh, we did provide the documentation. I, I uh, 
got a call back from them advising that they did receive it in a timely manner. Um, we mailed it, we emailed it, we faxed it. Uh, we wanted to make sure that they got it. Uh, so uh, they did. It took us uh, three times faxing. There was no answer uh, three times. Uh, so they, But they ultimately did receive it. Uh, June 1st, I believe it was, they got back with us and uh, said they received it. So they have our data, uh, and uh, they are gathering information from the other political entities. I, we made sure to let them know that we did not represent the entire county or all of our constituents, but only those that we collected taxes for. So the data that we provided them only impacted what Marquette Township actually collects and distributes. So I know uh, Marquette County responded uh, as well, and I'm not sure if any of the other communities did. This would have gone to the city too or not? Um, possibly. Uh, well, uh, probably not because they don't, they don't collect, they only collect taxes within their own jurisdiction. So, but it would be up to other county entities, the school districts and things such as that would have had, should have had the opportunity to, to respond. We did in their behalf for what we collect. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure if Nagani Township did for you know what their impacts might be or others. Uh, we don't get a list of who responded. Well, in the copy of my letter is in your packet. That's what I was just going to say. the The packet includes the transmittal, and there are you know for the public there are serious concerns for themselves if this property were to become in part of the trust. Um, it's it's like a little island it becomes uh, in and of itself so that things that happen in there are different and it's like having a fenced area almost and for this board uh, this municipality the the zoning and the lighting restrictions that we have or I shouldn't say restrictions but the ordinances for um, for all of that stuff and what happens with fire and police and you know that's it's a that's our charge is to look for the health safety and welfare of those who who are taxed that's our job so this is a serious concern and I give kudos to the staff for doing such a hard hard task of trying to figure out not only the monetary impact of this losing the taxes that they are now paying but um, what happens how does how does that all fit in to how our public interacts with the, the gas station well this is not just a dollars and cents issue you know as the supervisor Durant has mentioned basically what it, what it amounts to is uh, should the property be put into trust it would become sovereign uh, as the uh, as the uh, tribal uh, properties are which means that none of our ordinances or requirements uh, would apply the the Planning Commission for instance has been working very very diligently to come up with lighting ordinances signage ordinances um, aesthetic ordinances in terms of how uh, how the township looks and operates uh, that would not apply to that particular piece of property as as you mentioned it would be like an island and the issues then come up uh, you know we have a signalized intersection as, as Kathy uh, mentioned right there if you're coming down the hill it's difficult enough to see the light with the background lighting but uh, let's presume they put up a large flashing sign uh, which would not be in compliance with our ordinance blinding res you know, drivers as they come down that hill entering the township that's a concern um, what happens if a uh, uh, if a non-resident let's say is in the gas station and has a fuel spill who cleans that up uh, is our fire department responsible because it's within the township but it's not in compliance with our ordinances potentially there, there are all, any number of things uh, it could occur in there uh, police, fire, uh, emergencies. When, when do we and when don't we respond? Uh, you know, in the public interest, it's it's still within our community, even though it's uh, not participating. So those are some of the the issues that we tried to address uh, in the uh, uh, in the letter. Uh, I, uh, we are concerned, as Kathy is, about you know that intersection and other intersections because people don't pay attention to what's going on. Uh, in that particular issue that, that she mentioned, that individual driver was cited for violation of the basic speed law. They were speeding. They're not, not in compliance with the law, and that is typical within the, uh, within the corridor. Far and away, the majority of the incidents that we have are not road-related. They're driver-related, either distracted or speeding. Uh, so, you know, those are things that, uh, that it's hard, hard to control. Well, law enforcement can only do so much. Uh, we have, as Mr. Larson mentioned, you know, budgets have been trimmed and law enforcement has been cut. So, uh, you know, 
our poor guy only has 80 hours to cover the entire township which if you look at the map is huge 54 square miles one person so you know it, it's it's difficult so you know the uh, we don't take a position favoring or not favoring the trust issue but we provided factual data and how it affects us correct yes John uh, first I'd like to compliment the, the staff on the, it's an excellent report and it covers many of the areas but one of the points that were made in the report uh, that drew my interest was uh, that many of the areas of issues that were brought up could be remedied by an agreement with the tribe if they voluntarily agreed to abide by all the present and future ordinances of the township. I, I, th I think that was a thoughtful uh, point to make and put in. I just wondered uh, whether we'd have uh, any communications with uh, KBIC to see whether up front they would indicate they'd be willing to do that. We have. Uh, previously, when this first came up, uh, which was a couple of years ago, basically, we did have uh, a, a series of meetings with uh, KBIC leadership and their, their, uh, their willingness, they were willing uh, to um, offset the impact, let me put it that way, uh, offset the financial impacts through other types of contributions. But that would, that would alleviate issues right here within the township, but that would not alleviate other issues like school districts and things such as that that would still be um, at a loss uh, were they to be in trust. But uh, in a short answer to your question is yes, the leadership was interested, was willing uh, to engage in discussion with us for those kinds of uh, those kinds of agreements that would support the fire department, would support law enforcement, would support uh, township operations in some other manner other than um, accepting ordinances or regulations. Uh, they wanted to maintain their sovereignty. Uh, and those agreements are as good as the leadership remaining in office. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, Ernie. I think the last, last comment that our manager made is that the leadership with their election on a periodic basis, it can change drastically at any given time. So. What they say today and put in writing today can change the minute they get new elected officials and that, because they're a sovereign nation. They live by their own set of rules and regulations that we don't, we don't have in that too, so. Well, one example was the recent dispute that they had with their judges, so they cut off the electricity and power and water to the courthouse. So, you know, I mean, it's, it, yeah, you, you are dealing with a sovereign nation uh, who can declare war, I guess, anytime they want, <laughs> you know, per se. <laughs> Uh, you know, so it's it's a it's a tough issue, uh, and it's not it's not just uh, locally. I mean, there are other businesses that are impacted, and it's being looked at from other entities. I know uh, legislators are looking at it. I know uh, um, lobbying organizations are are looking at it as well and giving their input to BIA. But from our standpoint, we tried to avoid crossing the line to take a position one way or the other. Simply provided factual data. Anything else? Any other discussion? Yeah, go ahead, Pete. We just went, we're going through it right now. We're still not done with the dark store issue. And I always thought it's similar to that, you know. I mean, something different for some people and not for others. And I just struggle with all the money we spent and time that they've done with changing the ordinance for different reasons. And in some cities, you can only have red or green and you can't have yellow or whatever, you know. But I just think. We should stick with our ordinances, and you know that's the way I feel. You know, so. So the bureau will end up being anyways. the ones that are going to determine whether this goes or not. But uh, at least they asked for input to right. see the impact. And it isn't like Randy said; it's not just us. It affects the whole county, the whole region. It's um, it's just that little island that kind of scares me the impact of that and our board changes how do we know that our board isn't gonna do something different in four sure. or seven years or it's eight true. years you know, 
Well, they chose to come in under the circumstances of, like everyone else, so, you know, just. It's another sovereign nation. It's just 70 miles away. I was just going to say, yeah, it, it'd be different mm -hmm. if it was even uh, adjacent to the reservation exactly, so that at least you'd have a, a better working matrix of, of how it would function. But this is just like right like in the I middle said, of the business our, district. Our last meeting, Lynn, as I said that they have a card. They can still get a, you know, the discount at a st station down Washington Street. So this is somewhat akin to spot zoning, yeah. which we don't want to do. Most communities no. don't. Okay, onward and upward here. Continue discussion of Peter White Public Library contract. As I mentioned, the <coughs> committee that you appointed. The officers in this case did have a meeting prior to this we had received correspondence from attorney Zappa and he was in contact with the library's attorney um, and probably should know how to pronounce her name Cernick Cernick not quite sure from Foster Swift Collins and Smith and Prior to that communication, this, this subcommittee and the library subcommittee had agreed on the terms of the contract. We brought that back. And in the meantime, the uh, library attorney ended up, and Roger can address this too in a minute, um, sending back a revised contract <coughs> to Roger. So knowing it was a little different than what all of our entities had already agreed on he also kind of marked it up and I copied those and put them for you tonight because we just kind of went through this today and the attorney had pretty much <laughs> read it out the whole contract you can see I had it printed in color so you could tell the changes and uh, Roger kind of tried to blend it back so I know my cohorts here have very definite opinions on the contract as I do and I have suggested to Roger that we go back to the original one that everybody approved and represent that and um, I'm gonna let um, Randy and Ernie speak because they have very specific comments they'd like to make I don't want to rain on their parades so you want to go first I'll go first uh when I first received this, I kind of looked at it and read it and put it aside and that and went back and reread it again and that. And the more I read about it, this through this, all it is is moving words around and around in a different language and that's it. And we spent a lot of time, we spent a lot of dollars with our attorney to go through and do all this and that. You can see that, John. And uh, I got very, very upset by what's going on here. And uh, I'm not for this. We met with the library, their, their committee, and we talked about everything and we laid it pretty well out. We took the copy of what they presented that they found on what, that was written back what, 2010, 2013, something like that, and modified that somewhat, and both groups agreed to it. And now all of a sudden at the last minute, their attorney comes through with a contract that's already that's all redlined all the way through, and I'm not happy about it. This could have been done months ago if they were at, at all interested in that. So I'm not for moving on in this. I'm going back to the original one on, I think it was April 13th that we got from our attorney that laid out and presented to them and say, this is the ones we want to work with. Because it addresses everything that the committee on both parts were talked about. I don't know where their attorney is coming from or what the rationale behind it. I don't know, but I'm not happy with it at all at the last minute to get something like this when we've been trying to do something for months in that. And we only have until about the middle of July to make a decision to put a millage on the November ballot. So something has to happen. And if you go with this, we're going to be badgering back and forth in this for a month or so. And we're not going to have time. So I'm. I want to present what we got on, I think it was the April 13th from our, our attorney. We'll have to verify that and send it to him and say, this is what we want to work with. 
It's yes or no. Let's move forward on this. Because uh, this year we paid two hundred nine thousand dollars to the library in that. Uh, next year it's going to be more because every year it goes up strictly because of the state and that. So probably go up another five percent or something like that again, maybe more than that. So if their attorney has that kind of dollars to play around with, so be it. Let them play around with it then. But uh, as a committee member and as a board member, I'm not interested in going through the whole rationale again. And that, that's my feeling. Randy? Well, I don't have to say too much more. Treasurer Johnson did cover most of it, but um, yeah, I would agree with the one that this board approved back in, uh, I think, a few meetings ago that we moved forward with. I know our attorney has tried to uh, try to smooth it over a little bit with what we got back, but I think the one that we have and the one that both committees uh, were happy with is the one we should move forward with. And I understand the library is trying to protect themselves also, but I, I can't see revising the whole page. You know, the whole contract's almost revised. So, I mean, and some of the stuff, it's just not needed. I mean, and our, even like the uh, our attorney, our attorney, Roger, like the state aid, I mean, we don't get it, and she's insisting having that in there, and it's kind of like a, you know, I, I don't understand where she's coming from, but I just think we should go at what we had and move forward, uh, because as Treasurer Johnson stated, time is running out. We have to get that millage uh, ballot language moving forward so it can get placed on the November ballot if, if we go that route. Roger, do you want to comment before? Sure. Anybody ask questions? Um, the copy that you handed out, I believe, has the red and the blue revisions yeah, in it. Yeah, I did that on purpose so they could see. Okay. The changes may not be quite as substantial as the amount of red ink might appear. And the changes in the blue that I made, more or less with a couple of points that I'd like to address with you, pretty much revert to what the other one said anyway. And there are a couple of points. Recall at the last regular meeting, the June, I'm sorry, the May 17th meeting, one thing that this board asked to have changed is instead of having consecutive two-year terms, is that you have a two-year contract with one two-year renewal. That is in, I put that in in the blue changes that we have. So that's in there. So that would be one more change. And there were a couple of the changes, both in the red and the blue, that were typographical changes. Now, what I'd like to do, though, is address what some of the significant changes that came back to us were. You'll recall at the original 1993 contract and all of the versions that the various parties discussed in the meantime had a provision that said it could be terminated by either party with six months notice. This version basically says it may be terminated by either party with six months notice, but then the effective date of termination will be December 31 of that year. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Let me give you an example. Um, if, for example, this board were to decide in March, or the library board decide in March that they didn't want to have ongoing services or a relationship, they could give the six month notice in March and instead of it then becoming effective, um, say in September, six months down the road, it would be effective at December 31. The benefit or the merit or the rationale, if you will, of the attorney for the library putting that provision in is that then neither party has to start prorating the millage that's being paid. Because keep in mind, the township is paying their millage on or about May 1. And that millage is designed to be for a one-year period of service. So this would eliminate, let's say, the uh, 
Um, the termination date happened to be September 23. It, it avoids having to go through and prorate and refund or to, to change how that would work. So I, I wasn't comfortable in just sending this back without it coming to the, before the board, but there is some rationale behind that. And if the board doesn't wish to go with that, that's, that's fine. But that's the reasoning that was behind that, is by having the termination at year end, perhaps it's cleaner to do it that way. It's, that's not how your old contract from 1993 was, or how any of the other ones were, but that was a suggested revision that she made. And that was a significant change that I just wanted to point out because, to make sure that if you were going to approve that version, that you understood that. Now, some of the red revisions I felt created some new issues, probably inadvertently, that I changed and I believe addressed. But real briefly, I won't keep going on and on here. It basically said that if it was terminated um, either by termination by a vote of, of either board or if the millage didn't renew, that then any millage that was authorized would be levied in full if it was before the termination date. That, if you think that through, and you almost need a flow chart to do it, but that means that if you were going to have a December 31 termination date, which the new version has, your millage each year is levied in December so it's automatically buying both parties in another year of service because that, that may, or another year of, of levying, when I don't really believe that that was the intent of either party. I believe that was a symptom of changing the other provision in the contract. So if you wish to go with the revision of sticking with a December 31 termination date, because again, there are there's some rationale to that. The language in the blue, I believe, clarifies that just either party who was ever going to do the terminating will specify what the last year of levy will be. So if there was a March, say, 2017 termination agreement by either party, then there would be a specification that and the last year of levy will be December of 2017, or it could be December of 2016 even, because that would still be an option, because you're still getting your service through that year from the May distribution. It gives you more options to do it that way by with the blue language I've inserted back in. So I wanted to present that to the board as just an alternative that puts it back in, I believe, to pretty much what this board had contemplated originally, except for changing it to a year-end um, termination date. So again, as I always say, my role is not to tell the board how um, you, you should move on these matters. But by the same token, I'm not doing my job if I'm not explaining what the changes are by the two parties so that you can have informed consent of knowing what it is you're looking at and, um, and approving one way or the other. Those were, th there, was all, there were a couple of grammatical things. Um, I struck the language be required to. It was just redundant in a couple uh, places. There were, and there was a typographical error on the year of levy, also the last year of levy um, currently in effect. So that's been fixed. Roger, what is she, what is that attorney, keep putting in the state aid that we don't get? Um, because to the library, the library does get state aid to libraries. They just don't get it from us. So um, the proposed contract had said, the, the one in the red had said, the township also acknowledges that the library shall be entitled to 100% of the state aid allocated to the township uh, under the provisions of the State Aid to Public Libraries Act, and then it gives the citation. Well, that's what I objected to, because there is no library aid 
allocated to the township because the township is not a library. Um, but that's really an inconsequential provision. So the way I've proposed to reword that, if you would wish to go with that version, is simply saying that the township also acknowledges that the library shall be entitled to 100% of the state aid resulting from the township being included in the library's service area. And that makes a difference because that accurately summarizes that the library does get state aid because we are now in their service area. So I believe, again, if you wanted to go with that version, it should make them happy and it also makes an accurate statement of the rationale for the funding. And I, and I don't know that, that it's really a very monumental um, provision. What's much more important is when is this thing going to end as far as, and we've addressed those things two different ways. But that one, they're going to get the state aid to library regardless of how that's worded. Um, I just was uncomfortable with it saying that it's allocated to the township when that's an inaccurate mm -hmm. statement in my opinion. Anything else, Roger? Uh, we? Not for me. I've gone on quite a while already, but I'm more than happy to answer any other questions. Again, I guess I'd like to emphasize that the changes were not as major as the red ink might um, lead you to believe at first glance. And, and a few blue words added back in. For example, I had a, um, the library attorney had changed it that the uh, millage shall be made on or we had on or about May 1st, and she changed it to on or before May 1st, and I changed it back to on or about because there are all kinds of circumstances that could come up in terms of someone being sick or being out of town or having an emergency, and it might be May 2nd or it might be April 30th, or um, that's what we had agreed to before. Um, so that's back in there. Um, the language about contingent upon voter approval, saying that we'll pay the, uh, the millage, the annual fee of 0.9061 as adjusted by Headley. Um, I guess she felt that that was slightly redundant because there's another provision that says that it's got to be approved by the uh, millage, but just, hmm. I'm sorry, by the voters, but I put that back in so it's in that paragraph just so it's clear those are the types of revisions I made to bring it back in sync, I felt, um, with what we had a, agreed to. So I guess, make a long story short, um, some of these changes, if it moves, it might almost be quicker for this board to just adopt the blue revisions that are in here than going back to the start. Um, if if you're, you're looking at conserving attorney hours, I'm not sure. But I'm just saying, again, it's your decision, but don't rule that out as an option because I think we have kind of neutered, if you will, the, uh, the provisions that were, that I think created some problematic scenarios down the road. And again, I, I believe that was completely innocent and inadvertent in the sense that they were trying to accomplish one thing, and it led to a new problem. And I think we fixed that. Well, so. our, our two ways of uh, the library rules are way different than township rules or government rules. Then they're very parallel. There's, there's not a lot that comes together with us thinking the same. So I think you've done a great job of trying to to bring those together because like I say their laws are very specific on how they have to operate and so are ours so let's get some questions for you Go to a disagreement uh, we had talked about what original said shall replace and su uh, supersede the prior contract executed by the parties now it's saying shall begin immediately upon approval it does not say anything about superseding or replacing the original one is there a problem not addressing the previous one? Not really, because if you sign a new contract, by operation of law, you're replacing the old one, especially when it's as comprehensive as this one is. If it said something 
you, you could make an amendment, just like you do a codicil to a will, that might be two sentences. We're changing paragraph 2A to instead of um, you know, ending on such and such a date, we're changing the date. Th there would be no confusion in any court if somebody sued somebody else in this contract that this is a new contract replacing the old one because all the terms are either restated in the same manner they were before or they're replaced by new ones. So that would not be um, a very consequential thing either. Okay. I think along with that, the, the date of May 1st, uh, because we don't know for sure when we're going to get the final payment back from the county. And it's always been earlier than that, but who knows, there could be some problem in that. And then by putting it in there, then the general funds are going to have to step up and make that whole until we get it back. We don't and I did recall to. having extensive discussion about that, which is why we made it on or about rather than right. Right. exactly on or on or before before. So that's back like it was. It's the same thing with trying to have, like I said, talking to be able to back out if the voters turn us down. Make sure that is in there. Otherwise, the general fund, again, is going to be hit for a big dollar amount in that. Mm -hmm. And it is. Dan? I, I, I find it kind of interesting <laughs> when I look back at the four or five short paragraph 92 contract that we agreed on, and I look at this and I'm wondering why didn't the lawyers look at that one and change all this thing from here because obviously they'd have a, the 92 one doesn't work in that well. That being said though, um, I don't have any problem with the uh, termination on the 31st of December. I, I believe when we went ahead and actually terminated the contract, we agreed it was going to be on the 31st of December, so I have no problem with that at all. So as far as I'm concerned, I would make the motion to accept all the changes in blue and uh, send it off so we can get this moving. Okay, we have motion and support. Pete, you want to comment? Well, first of all, I think since we, since we just got this tonight, we should put it on the public forum for the next meeting and also uh, address some of the, the charge that the committee was charged with is to go meet with the library, come back and have a work study. We still haven't discussed some of the other things and we still haven't had a work study. So I, I'm not in favor of it at all. I think we should just put it in a public forum for next time or have a work study. Like we said, that's what the charge it was, so. Okay. Is that a motion? No, we have yeah, a motion on the floor. We already got a motion on the floor. Yeah, so we're just having discussion now. Ernie? Before I would vote on this, I'd like it cleaned up so we have a good piece of paper and document in front of me so I know exactly what we're voting on at this point in time. That too. I can read through this, but uh, I'd like to have a clean document in front of me in that because there's a lot of red in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Has the motion failed? No, we're just in discussion. We haven't voted yet. We're just we're just still answering questions. Um, Roger, in the April contract, the original one that we thought was okay, it already specified shall continue until December thirty first, twenty eighteen. Um, would that not be clear enough to have an ending date? Because let me back up. Um, if I if I remember the consensus correctly. Our intent was to have a two-year contract with one two-year renewal and stop. That was it. And that was to address some of the board members' issues with this continuing on and on and on and not getting looked at. So the original, I believe because it says shall continue until December 31st, 2018, does cover that part. Well, that's just your initial contract term and the part that makes it then just one additional two-year term is, is now in to B right. it says and shall automatically be extended for one additional term of two years after the initial term unless either party exercises its termination right pursuant to section four or six and so forth now Yes, that's abundantly clear that the initial term is two years and that the renewal would be for two years. But keep in mind, the original contract and the last version allowed either party to terminate essentially at any time with six months' notice. So 
So this is the so so new this version. so that's g gone under this version that you have here. What it would be is you have to give or they have to give six months' notice, at least six months' notice, and then your termination date will be the year end following your six month notice. So if you give it in um, September, you're not in compliance with a December termination of that year. It would be the subsequent year. Mm -hmm. But if you gave it in March, as you did, I don't remember exactly when you did, but if you gave it early in the year, then it would be effective okay. December 31, which is what you did mm -hmm. in this case anyway. You would have had the right, potentially, to say it will be terminated in six months from whatever that meeting date was. But then you would have gotten into that issue of um, are we on May 1st going to withhold some of our funds of our millage or are we going to pay it and they're going to prorate it back to us and how do we go about allocating that? Is it going to be on calendar days? Is it going to be on amounts of services actually utilized? How will you determine that? So you see by having a year-end termination date there are some pluses or some merit to that. It makes some sense. Again, uh, understand that the contrary point to that is you are giving up the right to terminate at any time with six months notice. Instead, there's a trade-off there. And I'm not advising that, that one is better than the other necessarily. That's a board decision. But that's the difference between the two. And I did after I hung up the phone with the, with the library attorney, stop to think about, well, maybe there's some merit in at least having this discussion with, with our board to, to discuss those points. On and that. and that's, why I, that's why I wanted to do this, and I checked with Roger to make sure it was ready, and we didn't have time necessarily to give it to you earlier, um, but you had charged us with communicating with their committee and this was just so radical I couldn't see us making decisions about this type of contract with that other committee I thought that we needed to discuss how drastic this was well that was even the charge of creating the committee and the the it was our treasurer that asked what is the charge to the committee and the committee's charge was that you're to go and meet with the representatives of the Peter White Public Library and come back to this board and make a presentation. And the intent was that there would be a work session, that there would be discussion with the board, the full board then, and give the committee then instructions on how to continue. We've never had that. We've never had, as Pete, pardon me, as, as Representative, I keep trying to promote people here. That's okay. Pete's I don't fine. have the years, so forget it. Pete's fine. <laughs> okay. So that was what a number of us were waiting for that weren't part of the committee that went. But, but it was requested by our treasurer saying, I want to know what we're charged with. Well, that's what you were charged with. Yep. Go, meet, come back, and discuss with the full board, and then go back with the instructions from that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's fine. Dan? Well, <coughs> not to disagree, but I, I think that's what we have done. I, I think, I don't, if you're going to come back at, at a, as, and meet with the two groups, then I thought the idea here was to come up with a solid agreement for a contract that we can sign and agree on. I, my first assumption was we took the one that they gave back with our changes. They came back with their changes. We came back with our changes. I think we're almost to this point right here. Um, listening to Roger, my only assumption that's different than what we had was apparently that 31st of December date um, with some minor corrections in, in spelling or whatever, but I mean, um, <coughs> I, I'm assuming that, I, I don't know what work session we need. Uh, we're at the point where we've all got the contract, we've read the contract, um, we all agreed in the contract last time, they come back with this smaller change to again to the 31st of December. So I, I'm, I'm wondering, what else are we gonna discuss? 
um, you know, we're, we're to that point now where the way I look at it, the way I look at a, a contract is, is this is their offer. Roger made his small changes in it, which I, I agree on. And if they accept that, then fine and dandy. That, I, I don't understand what we're going to accomplish with the work session. Roger, do we know if the library board has seen this or their committee? Do you have it? Oh, any? I'm positive they haven't because okay. I submitted it to you a couple weeks That's what ago I when I was the trail. finished it. And I didn't want to submit uh, this to anyone until this had been passed upon, upon by, at a minimum, this library committee for the township. Mm -hmm. Um, or preferably the board. Yeah, and like so I no, said, this has not been passed along. This was too drastic a change. If it had been a couple words, we could have come back with the recommendation, but this is way different. So, Pete, do you want to offer anything else? No, I, I just. Okay, you were shaking you have, your head. Are, so you ever, are you going to address the five uh, questions that you were charged with, or are you throwing them out? No. Apparently, it seems like we did. We just threw that out. So you don't, we don't want to discuss it, or you did no report back to us. We, the, the two committees have not met again. Okay. What we've been waiting for was Roger waiting for their attorney to come back with something. Okay, she sprung this, and I said, we're not ready to, to do anything with this. This is way more than, we thought we were right ready. Now. We thought we were, I thought the two committees had agreed. The two entities had agreed. And this came out of the blue. So I wasn't ready to have this, our committee, make a decision on something like this without talking to you guys first. So it's up to us. We can do whatever we want. The, we there's a motion off. on the floor, so we have to address that, right. whether that passes or fails, and then what happens after that. I just can't, I can't support that motion, that's all. The motion to accept this and right. go with it, okay. I can't accept that. Does anybody, should we vote? There's no support at this time. There yes. was a support. We, we have to call support. for the vote anyway. There was a support. That's fine. I just don't want to support. cut off any questions if somebody had some more. Okay, the motion is to accept this contract as it is. And with, with and the changes send from our change. attorney. Right, and send it to. Roll call vote, please. Sure. And send it to um, the library committee. The committee, I suppose, rather than the board. Yeah, the committee, the library committee. Okay, so we have a roll call vote. Okay, the motion maker is Trustee Pompo. Yes. Uh, support was Trustee Truscott. Yes. Trustee LaRue. No. Trustee Marks. No. Treasurer Johnson. No. Uh, clerk Retire is yes, and, and Supervisor Durant. No. That motion fails. Four three. So that's okay. failed. So what is our pleasure? Here's We've gotten a mo yes, John. As long as this is contract is being amended and sent eventually back to the library. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that. I move that the township attorney be requested to craft language to be inserted in the Peter White Public Library contract being considered that would accomplish the following. In the event a requested millage setting ballot proposal for the Peter White Public Library service is scheduled for an election year when no other issue will be on the ballot, the total expense for such election is to be paid in advance by the Peter White Public Library. That's my motion. And the, and the under discussion? Well, we would need a second, but I'm trying to figure out where, sure. where that came from. And that's a simple thing for the attorney to inject. And the purpose of the motion is that if they should be, if with all of these 
mix-ups of the dates and when and when it will occur and even if somebody challenges it and things like that. It could occur that the library issue would fall on a year when there's no other issue on the ballot. It's, it's my belief with paying to the library well over $200,000 that if they want it on the ballot, it shouldn't be the taxpayers of this community that pay for it. It should be the Peter White Public Library. And they can clearly find some of that two hundred and eight or ten thousand dollars. So you to pay for it. What you're saying is you want to add this. To I want this to contract. add it in the contract that if that happens, they pay for it. If they don't want to pay for it, then that's fine. Well, it's up to us whether it goes on the ballot or not. The, we, we, we decide whether it goes on the ballot, but we'll decide whether it goes on the ballot or not if that instance occurs. If there's nothing else on the ballot, they pay for it. Is that always the case? If the, I know if the school has a separate election, they pay for it. If anybody else has a separate election, they would pay for it? Would that fall to them too? Uh, I don't want to. It's not a blanket I, rule. No, I, I, no, I don't think so. No. Okay. What is the cost of election, Penny? Election cost is about three thousand dollars because I just saw the bill from the school election. It was about three thousand for toll. Okay. Well, I don't know that this has to. It has to be a motion to ask that this be added. I agree. I'll make a motion. Well, you just did. That Is there support? That be added. We need some more work done. I think we don't have support. What we need to decide is, Pete, since you've been the one who's kind of vocally objected to the contract, what are you proposing? First of all, I'd like to address this, and I think that some of the goals that were for the, the committee was to discuss representation. That was very heavy because, like I said before, you and Ernie come back, we can't do anything about it, stuff like that, so we should have some kind of representation. It, that would take time, but it was never discussed. And if we can go by a year or two, whatever, you know, it has to be renewed. We want somebody to look at it not wait 23 years to look at it but we're in favor of the library we support the library but we have to have checks and balances uh, as we found out tonight we need some work done on the language as far as when it's going to be terminated how it's going to be terminated and it don't seem clear to me that you know we have that answer yet so I would like to have a little more work done on that and discuss it okay the we can't be represented on their board. That's city charter and the way the Peter White Public Library Charter was written. There's nothing we can do about that, at least not in the short term. That's what I just said. If, if it's a goal of ours, over are they receptive over years? Over years right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. You know. So are you suggesting we because do we are a, As of right now, I mean, we can't put a limit on it. Uh, I would like to see that if we keep paying say uh, I think that would Randy say 200 and some thousand somebody said 200 and some thousand dollars that we're going to be paying mm -hmm. you know and as the township grows I'll, I'll say the word cap I'd like to have a cap on that because we have other things in the township that's going to cost the residents money and they can't like a business they can't spread that and I'd like to say we could still you know, give the same amount as we did last year plus more but anything over that you know, we should be able to use it for something else. I don't know, was it ever discussed? That's, we're st kind of limited on that too, that we can't, this, if this is a library millage, that's right. what it has to well, be. Well, maybe we for. should go three quarters of a mill and then use the other quarter or something like that. That's what, I, you know, I'd like to have some kind of a discussion on, but I don't know if you can and you can't, but. Term of the contract. Uh, it was been from one year to two years with two year renewal and stuff like that. I don't get too excited over that. I mean, as long as we look at it, discuss it, 
and move on that way. But well, this particular one would be a two-year contract with one two-year renewal. Well, I, so, since and, and just and getting this thing tonight, I would I would vote against because I'd like to read it. And some I think Danny brought up something about uh, or, or John did about have the uh, lawyer attorney look at something and bring it up next week. Maybe we use it into our public forum and finish it up next week or next meeting. So it wouldn't be a bad idea to have a clean uh, copy to look at, it, as Ernie, Ernie said. As Ernie suggested that. Make sure the attorney, you so, compare, and this is before them. we don't give it to the library committee at all or anything, you want us to look at it first, you're suggesting, and then present it to the library committee? Right. That's your library committee's predilection, whatever you determine on that. I can get you a clean copy of it tomorrow okay. morning. I mean, that's, I left it yeah. in the red and the blue so you could see right. no, what their the changes were it. because yeah. if I gave you a clean copy, it was going to obliterate oh, and then you'd changes. have to go back and try to figure out what the old one said. This way it's right in front no, of you of that's, what her changes what were and what my fixes to yep. those changes were. So that's what the intent was. But I can have that to you Ernie, by 8.30 ahead. tomorrow morning. I think a couple of things that Pete brought up uh, on the cap on the number of dollars, that's something that this board really is not in the position right now to do it. I think it's something that we can look at in the years to come, probably at the next time around, because uh, we have millage coming up this year, and in two years we have another millage coming up. And there's no reason the setting board at that point in time can't make a change in that. There's no question about that, because if you look at the contract, you put that six, six month termination in there, if you wanted, that board wants to do it, they can issue that and move forward on that end of it at that point in time. Uh, representation, that's gonna be a very difficult animal to address, strictly because of the city charter and that. Uh, I'm not saying it can't be done, but as we go up in valuation and as the dollars that we contribute more and more, it's gonna to get to the point where People, if you want that kind of dollars, we want a person sitting on that board. Uh, if you look at where all the other dollars that we contribute to, we collect from, if you go through the millages and that, we have a right, I should say, a representative from the township has a right to get on one of those boards through elected officials or whatever it is, but they have a right to run for one position in that. Uh, and you're talking about 209,000 this year. Uh, you're talking about an increase in valuation, plus the state comes back and it's running about 5% a year. So you just kind of compound that into the future and that and see where we're gonna be five years, 10 years down the line on that. Uh, so dollar-wise, it could be there and very quickly. And I, as I said before, before I'll even act on something like this, I want a clean contract to be able to look at it and see exactly what it is in that and be able to uh, discuss it at our next meeting and move forward and that we have a I would say July 15th board meeting that we're going to have to do something if we want it on the November ballot and that we don't have a choice on that so we have we have to do something in that and uh, I think the board has to let us committee if you want us to continue to do it once we get that updated contract to either meet with that committee from the Peter R. Library or just to send them a copy of it and this is the direction that we're going in that so I think the board needs to make a decision at that point in time. Dan, Dan go ahead. <clears throat> I, I, <clears throat> I understand what Ernie's saying to see a clean contract. I, I don't have a problem with that, but I, do, I, I have looked at the contract. I can see the red and the blue. I, I, I put enough faith in our attorney that, that what he said is, is what's going to be in this contract. Basically, the only change is that, is that 31st of December date with some minor corrections. Um, uh, I listen to what Pete wants, but what, what, listening to Pete, I'm assuming that he wants to change the contract again now and add stuff to the contract. Well, we're, at this point in time, I think it's getting a little late to start adding more stuff to the contract, considering that we have to have this contract done by a month from now. A and the fact that we have to get this thing cleaned one and then come back for us to approve it, which would be on the, on the 21st, then it has to go to the library board, which is going to be sometime in when they meet in July, then it has to come back to us again before we get decide to approve it. Are we going to run out of time? I mean, I mean, I guess I just don't understand what all these all of a sudden all these changes are. The last time we voted it was a four 
a 5-2 vote, I believe, that we would accept basically what we sent. And according to our, our lawyer, the only change that was made was the fact that the December 31st date had to be put in there rather than s six months from the time we decide not to, which is something we decided we were going to do anyway, initially. So I, 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 I just think that we're, <laughs> we're beating this thing to death. And I don't know whether the fact that the, it's the lawyer problem that's coming in here or it's our problem that's coming in here. Um, I guess I can, under, again, I can see, understand where their lawyer's coming from. I can understand where our lawyer's coming from. I mean, I mean, basically, we're talking a contract that is basically decided by lawyers, lawyeries or whatever you want to call it. I mean, as long as our feelings are in that contract. Now, by Pete wanting to put in stuff about you know, a representation and stuff like that. And we've now changed that contract again, which is going to have to go back to the lawyers again. And, and we're not going to be ready by July. I almost guarantee it. That's not what I said. Well, you, you just said that you wanted to put representation in there. I but it wasn't going to happen this time, but you wanted to put in there. Right. I want you to start talking and discussing and ask him about it because uh, it takes years. Well, I, I, I that ahead of time is going to take I was years. under the assumption you wanted that in the contract. No, I wanted to discuss it. Because then, right then now, I don't know if it's then my question, or not. Then my question is, is what's wrong with the contract? I'll go over it tonight and look at it. All right, how about if I suggest this? That Roger cleans it up and gives us a good copy tomorrow. I'm totally happy with getting together and spending a half an hour, an hour talking about it in the next day or two, if the board feels that that's necessary. Um, as Dan said, the contract, we already agreed on, on what we wanted to have done, but this is a new wrinkle. So if the library attorney is recommending this, she's representing the library board. We have to assume that they agree with it. Whether they've seen it or not, they pay her to do that. So this is a total circumvent of what we had approved. Now, if you want to talk about it, that's totally fine. We can have a work session tomorrow if you want to. Dan? Uh, just a quick question to Roger. Um, the, board, the library board cannot accept this contract unless their attorney agrees to it? No, I don't think that's entirely correct, but they're typically going to, if, if we make any revisions to it, they're typically going to send it back to their lawyer to look at it and say, well, what do you think? And that's where all the red ink came from the last time they did that. Do they have the power to override that and just adopt the contract? Absolutely. Do most boards think that's a good idea? Not so much. Do you want to talk about this tomorrow or Thursday or whatever? Well, I can. Roger can have it done. Or are we going to have another motion to to do just, something else just a comment sure uh, first of all I don't think that this board or the township in as a whole is under the gun we we made our contract termination months and months ago with the idea that the Peter White Public Library would have ample time to present a contract that they could accept. They didn't do that. They let the committee that was appropriately appointed here to meet with the library take the lead and present some things and then get them to make comments about it. And that our committee then taking the lead brought some information back and a majority of this board then agreed with what was thought then to be kind of a final contract so kudos to our committee kudos to the board but for anyone to say that we are under the pressure of meeting this date when it's the Peter White Public Library that's getting a $209,000, they're under some obligation to respect our position and our efforts to date. 
and to I don't want to use the expression take their head out of anything but they need to de wake up to the fact that they need to be doing things and should be helping out with our committee to get to a commonly accepted at least with the ma majority of this board and it, I just don't I'm not comfortable with the implication that we're under the gun we're not under the gun at all we gave them plenty of time and one more point I'll make and then I'll, I'll let the committee go on the one mill is much more than just a pass-through as it's been referred to if you think it's a pass-through talk to the taxpayers in the Oak Hill subdivision or talk to the taxpayers in Bishop Woods or talk to the taxpayers in Huron Woods and portions of Trowbridge Park that are paying a whole lot more than what it would cost if they went and bought a library card at the library and that's what started this whole thing many people are paying in a tax that's somewhere around 200 to 300 dollars in taxes that's what one mill costs those people so don't feel too obligated to this thought that we're under the gun and we have to keep moving i say put something together that you can get a majority of the board to agree with and give it to them and then say either take it or tell us whatever you want and we just sit back and wait for them to act. It is not our, it is not our supervisor's responsibility or the committee that was sent there to keep taking the lead. It's, it's ludicrous that with them getting that kind of money to support their library that is a city library and is, it is becoming the city community center, we should just back off a bit and think about the reality of what you're saying if somebody says we're under the gun to keep moving. We've done our part. And then some. No, I don't want to get into this major discussion about this, but I, I have to disagree with, with Trustee Marks. Um, the fact that I'm not saying we're under the gun, what I'm saying is is both committees did agree to the contract. It was a, it was a lawyer for the library that changed it. He's only changed was what was brought up by our our attorney. Secondly, I, I, I've, I'm sorry, this is something that's always bothered me. I have to disagree with it. It's not just a feed-through. It is a feed-through. It's like any millage out there. If you have millage for water, people are going to vote for it one way or another, whether they want it or they don't. It is a democratic society. The majority wins. If the, if the elections come for the library, it's put up for a vote. It's a library millage. Again, it's a democratic thing. They, people either decide or they don't decide. Because you're on the losing end of it, I, I'm sorry, but what, how else are we going to change it? So it is a feed-through. We have nothing to do with it. It's the people's decision, like any other election. you have a thought? I think we, as I said before, we need to get a clean copy of this and move forward on it as quickly as possible from our aspect. And once we give it to the library, they have to make some decisions because we're under a time frame if they want it on the November ballot. That's, that's where we stand at this point in time. So we need a clean copy of this, get it to the board members, and the board members look at it. We have to make a decision. I would say hopefully by the next, next meeting. And if the board uh, so chooses, we can ship a copy of the clean copy to their board, let them look at it. I don't know if that makes any difference. So we can move forward on the next meeting and we get this taken care of in that. And as John said, we're really not under the gun. The only reason we're under the gun is if we don't put the millage, our, our residents can't have access to it. But the other side of the coin is 209,000 this year, it's gonna be about 215 to 220,000 next year that they won't get. So they're gonna be under the gun too to move forward because they're not gonna have that dollars and that dollar rate back. So we need to move forward on this as quickly as possible from our standpoint and then leave it in their ball game, let them move forward so we can get it taken care of. 
Anything from this side of the table? Go ahead, Randy. Well, basically what Trustee or Treasurer Johnson said is what the motion is that what failed. So, I mean, we need, and none of the winning or one of the, none of the losing members can bring that motion up. So if they, if one of the people that voted no would like to do that, it could be brought on the floor again. Yes, Dan. Sorry. Can I make a suggestion? I would say have our lawyer get the corrected copy all cleaned up, give it to us as soon as possible, send it to their board as soon as possible, and arrange a meeting between their board and our board or their committee and our committee to decide if they agree on it, and then we can move right from there. Bouncing back and forth is not going to, it's going to take us a while. We're going to be here months, and, we're, I, I, and I, I know it's, I'm not saying we're under the deadline. But I don't think the residents in this township are going to be too happy with us if we fail to get this done before and it doesn't get on the ballot. And then they've lost, now lost their rights to the library for the next year or whatever it's going to take. So I, I, again, like I said, I think the two, we've agreed, both committees have agreed basically on the contract. It's just this one change that's in there. So let's get it straight. Try to get a hold of that board and say, hey, we're going to meet. And we'd like to we'd like to make a decision by the 21st of June at that board meeting. If you agree with it, then we that's what we run with. That's just a suggestion. It isn't really our responsibility, the way I understand it, to do this. This is this is their responsibility. We've taken it on. Right. If, if they want to do this, they they need to come to us and say we want to put this on the ballot. We make arrangements, and the people vote this isn't our job it's just like the roads it's the same thing we had to take it over all right let's have a clean copy tomorrow Roger if you would be so kind and um, send it to me I will get a hold of Bruce and the new director and have a conversation with them and uh, does this board feel that we have to have a work session or are we good with either the committee or me presenting it to them I think if it's a mutual agreement between the two committees, it can come back on the 21st and vote on it. Okay. I'll call them first thing in the morning. Roger, you should go and start typing right now. I'm not doing the typing, <laughs> but I will have it to you by 830. Okay. Yes, Ernie. Just a comment. Uh, we talk about the millage and we talk about the contract, and I think Roger will agree with me. It's two separate entities completely. Getting mixed up. That uh, the millage is one entity com by itself, and the contract is a separate entity by itself in that. But you we can't have one without the other, right? We as a board look at it. We have to have the contract before we want to move forward on the on the millage and that. But in reality, it's two separate items completely in that too. So, would you? Can you get an answer on how this plays into whether need, we need to have Roger add that or not? Do we know, or can we find that out? I just think it's easy. Whoever terminates the contract pays for the, pays for the election. <laughs> well, then that should probably be in here, too. So if the township terminates the contract, they pay the election. If the library terminates the contract, they pay the election. Pretty easy. That's pretty easy. <laughs> <He's good. laughs> just I don't think so. <laughs> if you're terminating the contract, there won't be an election. <laughs> So, just throwing that out there. Okay, let's start with that. We'll start with a clean contract tomorrow. Good? Um, yes. Would you, would you send that completed contract also to their attorney? <laughs> yes, so we don't I, go I, through I this? I can. <laughs> so we don't go. And let me throw it out there that I will make myself available in the event that there are questions that come up for the next library committee meeting um, because there may be questions as far as why are we making um, you know for the proposed blue changes or, or so forth or what does this mean or what impact does it have or why are we rejecting some of their red language and rather than putting the committee on the spot I will be more than happy to make myself available um, within reason um, whenever that occurs, if 
if the board wishes or if the library <coughs> committee wishes in order to um, maybe avoid yet another deferral of this. So we'll probably have this on the next agenda and maybe have it finished up. Okay. Can we move on? Yes. I don't even know where we are. <laughs> Not far enough. Motion to adjourn. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta conduct business here. All right. Mark's up. Local roads rehab update is 9C. And Dave wanted to speak to that, and and um, of course Mark is, so we're good. Um, do you you don't need to now? 10C, 10D. Okay, just want to make sure we're not leaving anybody out. Mark, you have the floor. Yep, uh, Payne and Dolan finished up paving last week. This week they're doing shoulders, concrete driveways, seating and mulching. Uh, this Friday, the weekend, uh, Payne and Dolan and myself, we're going to drive around the Trowbridge, all the streets, and uh, we've been getting some complaints about some driveways, some drainage issues. It's kind of a final punch list for Payne and Dolan to tackle any issues with, uh, within the contract. Um, that's going to happen this Friday. And then next week, Ben and Dolan's going to be cleaning up and doing any punch list items that we come up with on Friday. Um, the bids for the 2016 projects, the road rehab project, those were opened, as well as the South Vandenboom project. And those are 10C and 10D. Is there any questions? Ernie, go ahead. I have a question on Orchard Street. Yeah. Uh, I've heard some comments on Orchard Street and that and the way the drainage and that was going on. And uh, one of the individuals talked to me that the, the drainage on it was such that it was going to end up in his yard if something wasn't going to be done about it and that. Are you familiar with that? Yep. That's Friday we're going to drive and see what the contractor can come up with and we can come up with because I'm concerned with having any kind of drainage off that where that's going to go if it's going to be like on Fair Avenue on the uh, east end on Fair Avenue at the city limits and that that the county put in the only one that's keeping it clean are the residents oh you're talking the drainage drainage there the catch so, basins and stuff yes catch basins and that so if you put catch basins in there I want to know who's going to be responsible for maintaining them uh, next year, year after, year after that, and that too. So, yeah, that's I yeah. know that's an issue is the maintenance aspect. But as far as coming up with it at the time, either put the catch basin in because it's going to help, and worry about the maintenance. I guess that's the road commission responsibility. Isn't it? The road commission isn't going to do it. We're going to end up doing it in that at that point in time because they don't do things like that. No matter what they say, because there's no money out there in that. And, uh, I think it goes back to last year on Orchard Street when we had problems with water going into driveways and that. I'm looking at, from what I hear, and that, you can correct me if I'm wrong, almost like the surveying of Orchard Street was such that the actual grade is not done correctly to run the water all the way down to the end, getting it out of there. It's kind of got a dip somewhere down there in that. So am I correct in saying this and that? You're correct in saying that there was a low spot is a couple hundred feet away from where the low spot should be. The creek is, you know, you have that creek there? Yes. The low spot is 200 feet east of there. And in order to get the creek to be the low spot, you'd have to lift up the whole road. Well, that, you know, that, that's going to create a problem in the future for the township because the you can't rely on the county to do it because they're not doing it at all. In that. And that so what's going to happen is the residents there are going to be the ones that are going to have to live with it. Hopefully the county will have, I mean, more money as far as maintenance on those type of issues, especially if all the roads are being addressed and fixed up. 
Well, I asked that question here at the meeting two weeks ago, and I got no no response from them at all. So I don't expect much support from them in that at this point in time. So I'm just concerned what the future responsibility for the township is. That's my concern at this point in time. Mm -hmm. I was coming to you, Randy. <laughs> Go ahead. No good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you remember, uh, we are fixing the road surface. We're not correcting drainage. We're not correcting things that uh, previously existed. The road commission will be responsible for maintaining the roads after we've finished fixing them for them. That's what we're doing. They had, did not have the money to repair the roads that the residents were demanding. We passed the millage to fix the roads. We are not in the drainage business. Uh, we are uh, in areas where we are creating a problem. We're doing what we can to ameliorate that problem. but. We do not have the funds in this project to go off the road surface and correct issues. This is specifically for road surfaces. With the couple issues we have had on, on that street, I've been down there three times now, I think. Uh, I did stress to everybody that we can't, we can't have new problems for these people who didn't have problems before. Some, something has to be fixed whether it's at the engineering level or Mark's level or whatever it is, that's not, that's not our responsibility is to, to come in and try to fix something and create a new problem. We can't do that. It's not acceptable. We have to figure something else out. Yeah, much of the drainage issues is as a result of the development that has occurred in that area. Uh, if you go down Werner Street, as a, for instance, towards Miski, the, uh, the houses that were constructed on the south side of Werner are highly elevated, which changed the flow in that whole area. Uh, you know, we started getting flooding then. Whoever approved that site plan, which was not us, we don't do those, those, uh, those kinds of plans, um, did not take into consideration the impact that it would have on Orchard Street, which is now downstream from what used to be upstream uh, because of that, that, that uh, elevation difference now along Werner Street for those residences. So that's, that's part of the problem. But that has historically been a wet area. We've been, we've been dealing with water there for all the 15 years that I've been here. We just can't make it worse. Yep. Well, we did, it has rained the last, I don't know, a week or so, and I did manage to take a ride up Orchard Street, and it didn't look too bad to me. <laughs> I mean, comparatively before, uh, the creek was pretty high from the runoff, but um, I didn't see any standing water on the roads because they did bit curb it, so it's kind of running down to where it's supposed to go, I guess. And I, hopefully they haven't sort of, they haven't created any more problems for the residents that are there, but... Um, Actually, the dead. <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah. That's what Friday is going to tell the tale. But. So it's a good thing we got the yeah. rain so we know where the problem is, too. Yeah. Okay. Anything else for Mark? Probably should have put you all together so you could just keep going. Okay. We'll talk and fire uh, and then we we'll should, come we back. We should congratulate him on his new baby girl. Oh, really? Okay. Awesome. And mom's doing okay, too? Yeah. Great. Congratulations. Oh, Mark said he had it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Pete, for sharing that. Okay. Continued discussion of fire department apparatus replacement millage. That's a Randy. All I need is a yes or no from the board. Uh, you know, if we're going to pursue that or if we're not going to pursue it, that's, you know, because, again, we've got a July deadline if you wish to do that. Uh, um, I really don't have anything more to add. Uh, you know, we, we really don't have a whole lot of options with uh, the fire department and the special assessment uh, to, uh, to build up any kind of a fund balance for apparatus replacement. Uh, you know, there are relatively uh, few, few options. One is to wait until we need it and then do an installment purchase someplace. The other is to try and build up somewhat of a fund balance to offset that, which is what I was proposing. Uh, small millage over a, a fairly long period of time to establish a fund balance to specifically acquire or repair, heavy repair on a piece of apparatus. How small? Oh, I had proposed some half mill, it could be a quarter mill, it could be whatever the board feels comfortable with doing, uh, targeted specifically for that purpose. But again, it's a board decision, so. Thoughts? Oh, Ernie? 
Uh, as I said before, and even at, at the CIP meeting, work session we had, we talked about trying to come up, as far as my, from my point of view, is what the budget's going to look like for next year for the fire types. So we have a better feel as to where we're going in that. And I thought that was kind of the direction we're taking, is to wait for that before we make any decision. And we'll probably next year we probably talk about millage for the fire department. And that. That's well, but remember where we left it. But remember, you do have a commitment already. You will be levying the full two and a half mills to finish paying off the building. Uh, what I'm talking about is something in addition to that, specifically for a fund balance for a piece of equipment. I understand that. Yep. But I want to see the see the actual department budget, see where we're going. Mm -hmm. And uh, my understanding, they were going to try and do a three-year back look as to what, yep. and then try to come up with something in the future, so we know where we're at as to the direction on the equipment and uh, whatever else they need so we have some idea for future planning in that uh, granted it would be easy or nice to have some dollars out there for something happening in that but uh, when you talk about replacing some of these equipment you're talking three four five six hundred thousand dollars minimum at yep. the start and right. even a point two mils is uh, relatively small it's going to take a number of years to come up with any kind of dollars in that true and, uh, I think this year, if we want to put something on the ballot in November with everything else that's going on at the same time, it's going to be very, very crowded yeah. for you, everything in that too. So you do have the option of not building any fund balance, and if the need comes up, then you go and get an installment purchase from someplace and pay it over X number of years with an interest rate. Yeah, I mean, that's, those are the, really the few options that you have, excuse me, that you have available. My only suggestion was if you want to do something different than that, you need to make a decision by July so we can get a link, uh, something on the ballot if if you choose to do that. It was an option thrown out for the board to consider. So Randy's looking for an answer, you know. Just we, whether we, we whether you wish to do that or not. Last time, so we got to carry it over to know what what he needs to know what to do. You want to wait and see the budget and talk about it next year, Dan? Well, I think before we put any millage in the ballot, it would probably have to have a public hearing. I don't think we can just want to go ahead and throw millage in the ballot without a good explanation of why we need the millage. And, and um, the way I look at it personally is if, if we need a truck, I suppose we would, which is what we've always done anyway, is gone ahead and purchased with a, a bond or a loan that, that has been paid off over X amount of years. And then that just has to be figured into the budget of the fire department. We can do that. So that's my thought. I just hate just to put any more Yeah, this requests. is going to be a bad year. It is going to be very bad. And you, by putting too many on there, you jeopardize some of the other ones because people just say, well, I'm not, you know, my question. If, if we can get by another way, I would suggest for this year right now is to bypass this. Okay. So just take this off for now, and we'll see what happens, at least during the budget discussion. We'll have more information. Okay. It might be too late, but okay. Thank you. Okay. No problem. Continue discussion of sale of former township property. I have nothing new to offer. Haven't heard anything. Yeah, we kind of thought maybe Steve would be here with something. It's been about three weeks. There, there are road issues right at the T when the road commission changed the T right at that road and made the straight the stop sign a little straighter because if you remember it was just a kind of an open curve. Um, so they're having issues with the, the whole engineering part of that and and the the property line kind of moved and. That's what Steve's working on. He's earning his money because this is, you know, we don't have to have staff worrying about this. He's taking care of it. So we haven't heard anything. No, my understanding from the last conversation is that that is the issue. They are having discussion with the road commission regarding the, uh, the right of way, uh, where the right of way actually is, what, how much room they have uh, for construction within the property we and did what it, options they have. We, I didn't have anything to do with it, but staff did find some plans. And that's one of the things that Joe and the guys were looking for to see, you know, if we, they could go up two stories or three or whatever the deal was. So they, they do have some plans in hand that they can use. So that's that's been a good thing in the last few weeks. So between the two, between the road and the structure itself. I, I think that's the biggest issue is how how they would configure what it is that they want to do with the expansion. Yes, John. Well, one more time, uh, the issue on the. Uh, sale of the former township hall it, it it's such a 
critical thing to us to try to pay off the debt mm -hmm. for the construction of this building and then uh, I would urge the supervisor uh, if uh, something does come to conclusions that we can work with call a special meeting mm -hmm. I, and I think everyone on this mm -hmm. board would be more than willing to meet and and take action and get get it behind us everybody's doing what they can but it just takes now we're dealing with the potential buyer and the county you know we keep evolving yeah, into other <laughs> issues yeah. so but anyway I just want one more time for this this one member of the board and I think I speak for the rest of the board we'd be glad to meet in a special session if uh, if the issue can be resolved okay thanks mm -hmm. Dan I would just I, I agree with John um, but I would also throw in maybe you might want to get a hold of our yeah. real estate agent and find out what, where we are at this point is yeah. sure anything else okay that was an update new business considering DDA funded US 41 highway corridor study this uh, dovetails into the DDA meeting we had this afternoon uh, Randy can give us the details on that you do have in your packet a recommendation uh, as uh, you'll remember uh, it was all oh, at your meeting in uh, March your March 15th meeting uh, you received a uh, recommendation from the combined DDA Road Committee and Recreation Committee with regard to a request to uh, a expand the uh, boundaries of the DDA and B to initiate studies uh, for uh, lighting for pedestrian access for aesthetics uh, and traffic control within the uh, corridor in conjunction with the MDOT's planned 2019 and 2021 construction projects uh, what you have in your packet tonight is the compilation of that the uh, study uh, was put out for bids we did contact individuals did have a proposal come back from Parsons Brinkerhoff that we have negotiated uh, rate with that is before you this evening for acceptance as Supervisor Durant uh, mentioned, we did have a, a special meeting of the uh, DDA this evening, who is the lead agency of that combined group, and they did make a motion. And I, I passed out copies of the motion, but I'll read it for you. <coughs> Excuse me. A motion made by Delin Klein, supported by Andrew Rickauer, and carried by the DDA to ask the Township Board to accept the new business 10A recommendation to approve the Parsons Brinkerhoff lighting and non motorized conceptual design proposal the recommendation is supported by the DDA the Road Committee and the Recreation Committee for consideration in conjunction with the MDOT planned US 41 M28 improvement projects in 2019 and 21 so this is the study that you authorized the DDA to go forward and and design it will bring back deliverables that will provide the design and the engineering for lighting within the within the corridor for pedestrian access in time to be able to be utilized with MDOT uh, as coordinator projects to try and accomplish all of these things at the same time, 2019 and 21. And I'll make that motion. Do we have motion? Do we have support? Okay. Um, go ahead, Ernie. I'd like to add to that motion not to exceed $42,000. Yeah, the levy the levy within the DDA will generate right now we're estimating well the original estimate was about fifty two thousand dollars this came in at forty two thousand after we negotiated with them that will remain in the DDA's fund for match towards grants uh, that we're going to be trying to get through MDOT through their safety planning to offset some of these costs so uh, yes the plan will the uh, study will not go beyond 42 that is a fixed figure they will not exceed that um, but the DDA will then have a little more uh, we don't know what's going to happen beyond that there may be a little more than that uh, within the current DDA there is uh, there are projects that are currently pending uh, before the tax tribunal and also uh, in construction that will now be governed by the Court of Appeals recent decision uh, that they will be assessed on the cost basis so that puts us back in a normal taxation process for new construction not for past right yes John I just want to understand am I understanding that the motion is to concur with the staff recommendation to employ the services of Michigan based Parsons Breckenhoff consulting firm to complete an expanded US 41 highway corridor study 
for the sum not to exceed $42,000 and the clerk and the supervisor is to sign. Is that what the motion is? Yes, that is that's the recommendation, that's yes. That's what I thought I said. <laughs> I heard you. I heard you. The, the prior motion was the DDA's recommendation. But do we have the supervisor and the clerk signing it? I don't want to sign it. <laughs> Well, if just one person on this contract. Yeah, you don't need one so person. You have to decide who do you want to sign? The clerk. Uh, is, is that okay with trustee? Yes, it is. Is that okay with trustee? Yes, you sign it. Or the clerk will sign it. If it is approved. There goes the supervisor. <laughs> it's all right. I got enough to do. Um, so if you, I just want to kind of reiterate what's in the packet and, and for the public too. Um, this is a very comprehensive study that they are suggesting, which is what we need. And obviously we don't have millions of dollars to put into the corridor reconfiguration. So we're dovetailing on a couple other groups that are going to be working on this. Um, it's the best way to do to maximize our money is to be able to work in conjunction with other groups. And if we have the chance of getting any kind of grants, there's uh, safety grants, I think you said, Randy, that MDOT provides. MDOT has safety grants or several other recreation grants that could be applied to this as well. Because sure. we're looking at, you know, the underpass and having pedestrian uh, access read, you know, through the packet it talks about lighting and going under the corridor and we need some kind of a snowmobile connector. Um, it's just in lighting is the is a number one thing because I I see that in the corridor all the time people are constantly crossing over there in the dark instead of even going to the Michigan left where it's a little bit safer and brighter they're constantly going right through the middle where it's dark mm -hmm. so yes yeah, Ernie uh, I'm putting my treasurer's hat right now being that uh, we're gonna have the one mill for the, everyone in the DDA we really haven't received any of those dollars yet so general fund forty two thousand dollars we're going to have to comes out of the general fund fund the balance fund at, until that money starts coming that's in correct that. to be reimbursed at the collection right so i lift my treasurer's hat i'm trying to so find out where the money's coming don't sign from. those checks tonight then <laughs> we'll just have to keep the money <laughs> where's the beef <laughs> okay yes john i john i Mills? just wanted not to go by this without paying tribute to our administrative staff. I think that they did an excellent job working with the downtown development people and that, but, but we've got to compliment our staff. We've got an excellent staff that knows how to do these things and knows how to put them on paper and we should pay tribute from time to time, I think. Thanks, yep, that's good. In one of the preliminary meetings we had, um, I'm trying to remember everybody was there. The road committee was represented. Recreation, Recreation committee, there. DDA. Yep, the DDA. All of your, your volunteers. I was there. Randy was there. You know, for the township side, uh, BLP was there. They talked about lighting. Uh, the road commission was there. Mm -hmm. That was our first kickoff to see, you know, Correct. is this a viable project? Can we all work together and put this together? And it, it's that was the kickoff, and this is where we are. We're we're making it happen. So we have a motion and second, correct? Anything else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Got that done. Budget amendment 2016-06. Present to the board budget amendment 2016-06. I'll make a motion to approve that. It will be noted in the minutes as always. The highlight of that budget amendment is to authorize an additional $33,000 to the fire fund capital department for the new generator that was just installed. And the offset for that will be from um, contingency or from the fund balance. Also requested is $10,000 for a grinder pump department and the wastewater fund and that offset will come for the contingency. Support. Motion and support. We need a roll call. Correct. Clerk Retari is yes. Trustee Marks. Yes. Trustee LaRue. Yes. Trustee Trescott. Yes. Trustee Pompo. Yes. Treasurer Johnson. Yes. And Supervisor Durant. Yes. That motion yep. carries. If I may, just for, the, just for the public's knowledge, this is not an additional 
uh, transfer for the fire department's the second half of a transfer that you already approved. Good, thanks. Uh, consider UPEA recommendation for 2016 road rehab project. Dave, are you just available for questions? Okay, just want to make sure. And Mark, Mark too. And Mark too. Yep. Do you want him to go through this again, or? Okay. We've got some changes to contingency that he wants to uh, propose. We've got a, a bid amount that's lower on a couple parts of this. Yeah, so I'll let you explain, Mark. For the 2016 road rehab projects, we received three bids from one from Baco, Payne and Dolan, and Limburg. Uh, we recommend that the board move ahead with the low bidder, Baco. With the 2016 road rehab project in the amount of $865,248.01. This bid is about 12% lower than our engineer's estimate. I also recommend that we place a contingency since we're in unforeseen conditions, 50,000. Then the second thing for the board to consider, um, we also asked <coughs> the same thing for the contractors to give a price to perform some reconstruction work on uh, about a quarter mile of Cherry Street. Um, it's because the, there was such bad rutting on that street that crushing shaping really will not fix, will not fix it. So we're gonna dig out about a foot, put some geogrid down and put some gravel down. Just a foot reconstruction. And we asked for contractor to give prices on about 500 feet of storm sewer so not a whole lot it just helps us with the surface storm water issues that we've experienced on this uh, just on Orchard Street alone just allows us to address and maybe put a structure in with a pipe leading to a low spot um, the contractors came through and gave prices of well, Baco's bid would be $75,955.67 to do that work. But we'd also ask that we amend the engineering contract because it's going to take a little more time staking, inspecting, doing the engineering on that type of work. But it allows us to, to drive through with the roads committee. I already mentioned to Dave Wiegand to drive through with him and maybe Pete as far as finding the four locations that people have been complaining about for 10, 15 years about ponding. Hopefully, you know, ponding on the road, hopefully the, this can help address some of that, not make it worse. Um, that's the first, first two things concerning the 2016 road project. And that's, and you can see, also see I have attached uh, just for, so you guys can kind of see, I guess, budgetary-wise, where we kind of are. Um, I guess the last page there with showing kind of the total cost of construction, the total road bond. Um, you know, I know South Vandenboom is utilizing some water funds and sanitary funds. But we're, you know, it's... When it's all said and done, estimating out 2017 road work, uh, you're pretty much breaking even. I mean, with not with the road millage, but with the road bond that you're taking off. Is there any questions, or if the board would like to consider those two? I guess first uh, the base bid award, tobacco in the amount of 865 with a $50,000 contingency. And then the additional alternate, which allows uh, some base reconstruction on Cherry Street and uh, some miscellaneous structures, as well as an amendment to the Task 500 engineering contract. 
Is there any reason you'd want these separated or put together, Mark? Well, just because. As, as far as the motion? The, the motion as far as the, well, I guess you guys can decide that. It doesn't really matter. That's why okay. I asked if, if you had. No, I just. Are they considered two if, different projects? If you guys said, well, no, we don't, you know, just don't do the base reconstruction on Cherry Street and no drainage structures at all throughout the project, then it just, we're still going to just do the crushing shaping and live with what the result is. Mm -hmm. And then we have another on t um, Orchard Street, maybe. Well, I would suggest that the uh, that the board uh, accept both. Uh, the, the issues on Cherry Street have been long-lasting issues that we've heard many, many times uh, that uh, simply redoing the surface will not fix, fix it. It has to be some subsurface work done. And it would really be irresponsible for us to go into something, because that's been our mantra all along, is that we're, it's going to be right. We're going to do it right. We're going to spend the money and make sure. So. Well, it is that 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 subsurface repair is necessary to maintain the surface. I guess is the way I would put it. Uh, it doesn't do any good to fix the road and know right. that it's not going to work. We had the same issue out on Eagle's Nest. We wanted to make sure we did it right. Ernie, Move to accept up. the recommendation. Second. Question I have. This is all coming out of the road millage? Road, road millage and bond, yes. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to go through here and see where we're at as far as what's left. I couldn't not really two, tell either. Not two, so. Because we must be getting fairly close at this point that, in time. That, on yeah. the last page I have. Uh, yeah. On the summary one? Yeah, it's an estimated cost on the very top. It said road millage. Okay. Five seven two zero. That's a total amount. That's estimate for 2015, 16, and next yeah. year's work. So it's just 16 kind of and a 17. Forecast. Okay. Um, and the total road bond of five seven three. Okay, That's so kind of where you know that bond is paying for those road millage costs. So looking at the two figures, five. 720 versus 5730 you're only talking ten thousand dollars differential there <laughs> yeah anything over you know that is gonna well that's not necessarily that bond isn't saying what you're generating from the road millage yeah. Yeah. and that does that include the contingencies too then uh it doesn't does it i don't think the road i mean the road millage I don't think it included the contingencies. Suppose you know, some of that contingency will start to dip in the general fund. Road millage cannot. Yeah, we know we cover. we knew we may be there. Pardon? We knew we may have to cover a little bit of it. Okay. Looking at, it, I thought we we're getting very close. We are. In that too, so. Yeah. But again, you know, some of these additional things like Orchard Street and things like that that we didn't anticipate. Uh, the reconstruction of a couple of corners that we had to do to preserve the road or things that come up in the construction. Anything else for Mark? We have a motion and a second to accept uh, his recommendation on the first two. Um, we don't need him. We can just vote. So all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, so that, that was on both, Mark. Yeah, and I also, I guess, to f ease the treasurer's mind a little bit, remember every year we put about $50,000 towards roads. That's where this would come from. I know that. No, so. <laughs> that's a good reminder. That's okay. The public needs to know that, too. Um, so is that D2? Are these both together? Let's see. No, that no, wasn't. D is different. Yeah, D is different. Okay, consider UPEA recommendation for 2016 South Bend and Moon Water and Sewer Project. Now Dave wants to talk. All right. If you've got any comments on the rest of these two, Dave, I mean, because you've been working with this pretty closely. Don't, don't tell him that. <laughs> I'm good. Okay. Uh, just one comment on the, uh, the Bend and Moon Water and Sewer bit. The additional alternate number one, that was the bid we talked about putting out, uh, tagging on to this for that pathway going from the Ironheart Heritage Trail up to Grove Street. 
if you recall, when that uh, was originally bid, it was like $175,000 standalone. We could tag it onto this project for 47. Uh, I realize budget's tight, but <laughs> it is part of the rec master plan. Um, it'll never get any cheaper than it is right here. So it certainly recommend it, but I can certainly it's a board decision because it's a budget issue. So how does that get paid? Does that coming out of the <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me like that. I know what you're thinking. Water and sewer. And uh, no, this actually. Is, it's not actually a pathway. It's a widened road. Yeah. Uh, like a safety strip is all this is, uh, similar to what you have on. Uh, matter of fact, there's no curb even. This is just a, instead of an 11-foot lane, it's a 16-foot lane. With the stripe? With, with Correct. Stripe. Okay. And it's just a, it's just a path to get pedestrian and bike traffic from uh, the Iron Art Heritage Trail up to Grove and on into that uh, complex behind the, by the well field. 2,600 feet, so half a mile. That's half a mile at $47,000 is a pretty good price. Yeah, I had uh, put into the uh, 2016 budget about $35,000 for a pathway along Grove Street that I would transfer to this fund, to this project. It's part of our plan now, you know, long-range planning to do that. Does this do anything for us with complete streets? Probably not because it's yeah. not an actual. Yes, it does. It, you know, it connects trails. It connects trails. So this we is have all to part have. of the, uh, the rec master plan and part of the complete streets. But I mean just ordinance. making it wider and putting the stripe mm -hmm. that yep. satisfies? Yep. Okay. Dan? I just want everybody to make, make sure that everybody understands that this is coming out of the general fund not the road millage correct it's correct the additional consideration yes yeah the second part yeah the the money that i set aside was in the general fund for a pathway uh along grove street and we'll transfer that money to this project actually if you don't mind the suggestion if we could position this over a water or a sewer line we could probably get some of this <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and Kirk's not here. You know what happens when you don't come to meetings? It's going to be on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> okay. Mark, did you have anything else, too? Yeah, with that, I guess with the Vandenboom project associated with structures was low. Um, I don't know if you got the bid tabs, but uh, their total was 797000 879.40. Um, of this amount, I think the road millage is estimated to contribute about 302,000. Water, 379. Sanitary, 116. General fund. <clears throat> and the additional alternate with that pathway. Yeah, with the pathway, kind of just threw it in there, you know, not really designing anything, not knowing any grades, any quantities. So I had asked, just it's going to take a little time staking and separating it from the funds of seeing if it's sanitary funding, water fund, road funding, doing enough pay apps for it. And the documentation takes a little more time. We asked to amend that engineering contract as well. So these should be separate considerations so, so too then. Yeah, the pathway should be separate since it's general fund. Mm -hmm. Regardless, of the board should consider the 797.879.40 base bid amount with 50000 for contingency. Okay, let's consider that one first. I'll make the motion that we approve that. Which one were you? 2016 South Vandermoen Water and so the top one. Associated con construction. For the amount of 797 dollars and $50,000 contingency. Sorry. Support. Ernie? Back on the treasurer's hat again, and that. 
If you go back and look at my treasurer's report of April and looking at the dollar amounts for water and wastewater, I'm looking at water. With these, what we just approved, water will have 127,000 left and the sanitary sewer will have $390,000 left in that. Granted, there's dollars coming in every month, but we can't have too many more big expenditures. There just isn't gonna be dollars there to cover without going out and borrowing at this point in time. We're, we're getting to the point where shove come to push real quick in that too. So I just wanna call your attention. I think they're great projects, but the dollars are going down relatively quickly now too, so we have to be concerned about that. Well, and we've had people say, well, what's that money sitting there for? You know, you can use that. And well, we know we know that, that those are restricted funds for public works only. Right. But Kirk doesn't have a $5,000 project. You know, his are 500000 So you have to build that money up and have it available. I agree. But we also know we have to have a contingency for mm -hmm. something happening yeah. in the township itself. Yep like the freezing problems freezing problems and everything else in that we have to have some dollars setting back there so yeah. we don't want to get down too low no matter how good the projects look we still have to look at that you're doing a fine job i'm not doing a fine. i'm just calling attention you guys are have to do the job mm -hmm. that too, so. we need your vote Ernie. <laughs> yes dan <laughs> mark i just got a question I, I it's probably easy but what is uh, addendum one and addendum two Bidding process, uh, just clarifications for the contract. You answer. Oh, okay. The so contractor will ask what the engineer's estimate is. Okay. Reply to everybody in addition. Issue an addendum. That, or John, you had something else? Nope. Okay. We have a motion in support. Uh, right? We do. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so that's South Bend and Boom. Now the consideration of number two, doing the pedestrian traffic, uh, extra five foot from Grove Street to the Iron Ore Heritage Trail, half mile. I'll make a motion to be approved, number two there too. The 2016 South Bend and Boom additional also be considered. 441. And the extra engineering for 12000 Okay. Support. Yeah, support. Um, do we need to qualify how this is paid? What fund it comes out of? No. Or just, you don't have to, you don't need it? Taken care of by the account. Okay. I just, that was a question I was going to raise. I got it written down. At, where's the dollars coming mm -hmm. from? <laughs> that do so. I know it's coming from the general fund because it's the only place we can get it from. Yep. General fund itself is gonna yeah, this get is, lesser and lesser all the time. These are too. these are the what I have is is budgeted in the two thousand sixteen budget for a pathway. Okay. Okay. Because remember we knew this was coming. I knew it was coming, but we also have to let the people know where the money is coming from mm -hmm. on that too, so <laughs> Okay, anything else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. I think you can go, Mark. <laughs> you don't have to, but. We'll see the baby. We're down to the manager's report. No, we got. Yeah, yep. that, that, yeah. The, the DNR was pulled off because it was not necessary. Oh, we had, okay. The board had already acted yeah, in January 4th. They wanted it in a different format. Uh, Mr. Springer, the Recreation Committee chair, and I took care of that, put it into a different format, and that's done. So. <coughs> okay, manager, you're up. Uh, I I really don't have anything to add to uh, the printed report other than uh, you know Trustee Larue already mentioned the Catch the Vision car show and crews coming up here on the 25th of June. Um, that's always a fun event. Uh, sometimes we have good weather, sometimes we don't have good weather, but we always have a good time. So, regardless of what happens, sometimes it's rainy, sometimes it's not. Um, preliminary budget just give you a, an idea on where we are in getting preparations for the preliminary budget and also for collective bargaining I, I did uh, would like to get some input from board members uh, before your your uh, next meeting if possible so we can have some discussion in closed session 
Um, in Lions Field, uh, improvements are continuing at Lions Field. If you've been there recently, you can see boulders have been placed to block uh, vehicle traffic. Uh, the fence is partially completed. The gate is yet to be completed on the Kitty Park side, separating that from the parking area and the road. Um, slowly progressing along to get that finished off. It's being very heavily used. Any questions for the manager? Did you, did you mention uh, that there are concession stands in there? Or vending machines I didn't mention it but I think you just did <laughs> okay. uh, inside the pavilion by the ice rink as, as Peter mentioned it is open for public restroom facilities as is the pavilion by the ball field however in the uh, the one by the ice rink we do have uh, soft drink and uh, snack vending machines in there as well for uh, for use yes Randy uh, Randy and Pete there was a request made to me just recently that if there's any time on Saturday afternoon of catch the vision and that the old timers would like to have a little game in there. Like Let's set it for oh, yeah. three o'clock. Three yeah, o'clock. It'll okay, be at three o'clock. Yeah. Right now, the uh, since you've raised it, right now the uh, the plan for the uh, softball tournament is a Friday, Saturday, Sunday tournament starting Friday evening, um, with I think up to what six, twelve? Is it twelve teams? I believe it is. I think they have twelve teams currently that will be on there so if uh, somebody wants to put together a co-ed team which is the theme this year um, get in touch with either Dennis Andrews or uh, uh, or Dave Larson uh, and our crew here public works crew there they, they are managing the uh, softball tournament this year we also are looking at having a uh, uh, three-on-three uh, boot hockey tournament again uh, on the rink at the same time probably only on Saturday however um, and uh, those those plans are in the works. More more yet to come. Go ahead, Di. On the collective and barring, if we could all do it like on the twenty first, because for a closed session. That's yeah. not putting it off too far, right? Yeah, twenty first of June. No, that'd be fine. That'd be your next meeting if you know if. Uh, if your board members are prepared to sit down and start talking about where you would like to see bargaining go, we could do that in the closed session on the 21st, certainly. Okay. We, uh, there are rec room. I think the, we don't have a rec meeting that month either, that week. May not? No, that was canceled, so that would work out good if good. we have it before. Okay. Like either have it before or as, you know, at the end of the meeting. Either, either way, whatever the board decides. So we're good on the 21st then for that? Everybody will be all studied up? Mm -hmm. i got a question for the manager. Sure. Or a comment. Uh, will you explain a little bit about what the kids can do on the ice rink? I mean, since there's no ice on it, they can roller roller blade and stuff like that. No, it's, the gate is open. Um, you know, it can be used for a number of things. I mean, right now we have, we've had a request to put the nets back out, which we did because people are interested in, in uh, playing uh, boot hockey, street hockey, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we have uh, kids riding bikes on it, rollerblading, a uh, variety of things. Good. So we like to get more use out of it, you know, for the kids. and It's safe, the restrooms and everything else is there, so... It's, uh, I've, I've noticed several times that it's pretty handy for uh, kids that are just learning how to ride a bike. I've seen several of them in there with their training wheels and so they can't get off in the road and get in too much trouble <coughs> and kind of fenced in. <laughs> yes, sir. Two things on the Lions Park. One, can we get an update as a total cost where we stand on that at sure. this point in time? And then the other thing is we're at the point we're pretty close to end of it, I think, of doing everything. Very close. So we're going to have a thank you to everyone that has donated. At that point in time, we have something in the works as to what date that is at this point. Yeah, well, we don't have a date as yet, but it's uh, probably going to be somewhere right around our uh, community day in August. Uh, we'll be looking at putting in uh, similar to what we did on the Lions Field, the ball field side of it with the, the recognition. Uh, I don't know what you call it, kiosk, or whatever, whatever you call it, but yes, short answer. Jason was talking about putting something together. Anything else for the manager? How about public comment? Anybody want to? Uh-oh, Dave's jumping up. Now we're in for it. Do I have to extend the meeting? Just two quick things, and it's been brought up to me a couple of times, and I didn't have an answer for it, is why we can't put the uh, 
the calendar that goes out with the utility bill, why it can't be moved up for the next month so that when you got it this month, it's not for the for a full month instead of getting a calendar in the middle of the month. Can be. It didn't seem like that would be that big of a deal. No, it can be. Sure. And the other thing is, and I hate to bring the library thing up again, but <laughs> it just, your chance it to just talk. seems to me <laughs> that the contract is not joined with the millage no. and while I don't know all the ins and outs of it it would seem to me that you could as a board elect to put the millage on the ballot and if it in fact got voted in by the people and approved and sometime in November the township board and or the township and the and the library walk their separate ways you don't have to levy the millage but you could certainly get it in there, and that wouldn't that give the board more time to work on a contract of their liking? Just my suggestion. Yes, Dan. I don't think we can have a millage without the contract. I think that's that was the whole crux of the whole thing, anyway, because we have we have a millage for a contract that we don't have in place. The, the contracts is actually your contract for services that the millage funds. That's a Roger question, actually. I have to look at the exact wording of the statute, but I believe you can't have a millage request without a contract in place. And there are also, from the library's perspective, which isn't this board's issue, but they cannot get the state aid to libraries funding contract. and certain other funding unless there is a contract in place right. by a certain point in time. I'm not prepared to say what that date is, but it's um, there is a date specified that affects whether they get there. They have to have a contract in place in order to get that funding. Yes. I think the two things, Roger, would be the penal fines and the state aid. Those are the two items. Any other board comments? Or did, was there any public? Oh, sorry, Mary. Yeah, go ahead. We jumped the gun there. Okay, I just wanted to express what I was uh, thinking about as we were going through that long discussion. Um, it felt to me like it was a discussion of what's happening between the township board and the library board, but I felt like the people were being left out of the equation. I didn't feel like I had a part in what was going on. Um, I was with a group of members that came here quite a while ago and asked that that millage be placed on the ballot. And you know, with due respect to all your various considerations, I think as long as there are people that request that this get on the ballot, that it should get on the ballot, you know, let the people decide. If, if the voters, <coughs> the majority decide they want to support the library, then that's how it should be. And I guess I want us to finish this project, let's get it on the ballot, and then we leave it up to our voters to decide. Thank you. Okay, board members, anything else from you? You can hold it up again, that's fine. Reminders are good. <laughs> June 25th, the car show. Yeah, I did. Huh? <laughs> they took them all. <laughs> they don't want me to see it, bring up. Vision got bad. Yeah, Thank Anything you. else? We, we did have a comment um, from some folks who rented the community center on how great it was and how clean it was and our staff did a great job so I wanted to give them kudos too for for um, making us look good they do it all the time anything else yes Randy um, we did take some board photos and I have them here so we're, we're we have four of them so we're trying to figure out which one we're going to use <laughs> People have said that we need a new picture on the yeah, website we, and stuff. We need a new picture on the wall and We're on the sure website. So um, we are in the process of doing that. So hopefully we'll have something done in the next few weeks. So. Okay. Anything else? One more motion? Can I just add one more thing? 
Sure. Just a follow-up on the library. June 17th, 2 to 4, meet the director. Move to adjourn. Motion and support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? We are adjourned. 939.